Shalom, brothers and sisters. Shalom. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Trumpet's Call. I'm Maria. I pray that you are holding on to faith and holding on to hope during these times. Thank you for once again coming back to the channel and clicking that button. I appreciate your presence here. So thank you for joining me for another session of our morning prayer. So we're going to dig right in. This morning, we're going to read a few verses of scripture in Deuteronomy chapter 22. I was reading Deuteronomy this week and was focusing my attention was my attention was brought, I should say, to a few verses of scripture. And so we're going to read those, discuss it just a little, and then we'll, we're going to pray. So let's get started. So we're going to begin in verse 9 of Deuteronomy chapter 22. And it reads, Thou shalt not sow thy vineyard with divers seeds, lest the fruit of thy seed which thou hast sown, and the fruit of thy vineyard be defiled. Thou shalt not plow with an ox and an ass together. Thou shalt not wear a garment of divers sorts, as of woolen and linen together. Thou shalt make thee fringes upon the four quarters of thy vesture, wherewith thou coverest thyself. Okay, we're going to stop there at verse 12. Uh, all of Deuteronomy is pretty good. I've been really trying to focus in on Torah, the first five books of the Bible, and really try to gain an understanding of Torah, because I believe that the Most High is saying to us in this hour that in order to not come under deception or be deceived, we have to know his character and to know his voice and the thing in the world that helps us to know his character and to know his voice better than anything is of course his son and his son is the Torah and flesh so to study Torah is to spend time in the Most High's presence to pray and to read the scriptures uh, with understanding is to get to know the Most High so these verses of scripture at first reading I thought what does this really mean I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory with regard to not sowing seeds in your vineyard that are a different sort than the so than the than the grape seeds, and an ox and an ass being plowed plowing together. That makes sense as well. But I thought the Most High is practical, but He's also, of course, spirit. So what does this mean on a spiritual level? And so the more I sat um, and thought about it and allowed the the ruach to just bring understanding, I thought, what's the common denominator in all of these scenarios in these four verses? Well, you have uh, seeds of a vineyard, which would be grape seeds, and then diverse kinds of seeds, which means seeds that are not grape seeds. And it says here that you should not sow seeds that aren't grape seeds in your vineyard because they're different, and then it would defile your vineyard. And a similar situation with verse 10. You should not plow with an ox and an ass together. What's the difference? Well, an ox, a beast of burden, uh, is used to hard labor and laboring in the vineyard, laboring um, to get the work done. But an ass could be, or a donkey could be a little obstinate and could maybe want to go another way. So you have these two animals trying to work together, but they're not on, on one accord. They're not of one mind. And so they're not, you're not going to be able to get much accomplished with those two yoked together. And then verse 11, it says, don't wear a garment of diverse sorts, meaning different, meaning different fabrics, different fabrics like wool or linen together. Don't wear those together because the nature of wool, which is a, a warming fabric, you know, you typically wear wool when you're cold. And then linen, you typically wear linen in the summertime when it's warm outside. That's a cooling fabric. So they're different kinds. They're different sorts. And so the Most High is saying to us in these three verses, don't, don't be unequally yoked. So because the nature of wool is to bring warmth and the nature of linen is to bring a coolness, it's not something that you would want to wear together because they're not consistent. They're different kinds. And this is the case with all of the things that are mentioned in verses 8 through 11. They're different kinds. So I should say 9 through 11. And so in verse 12, we have the Most High giving us a commandment of something that we are to do. 
So he's giving us in three verses something that we shouldn't do. And then in verse 12, he's telling us something that we should do. He's saying, Thou shalt make thee fringes upon the four corners of thy vesture, wherewith thy, thou coverest thyself. So on the clothing that you wear on the outside of your body, uh, you're to, to put fringes on the four corners as a reminder to keep Torah. That's the purpose of the fringes. It's a reminder. So it's like it's a symbol of being set apart. It's a symbol of the Most High calling us to set apart living or holy living. And so wearing the fringes indicates what kind you are. So the Most High is telling us in these verses, this is what I see in these verses of scripture, that in the world when he, create, when he created the world through his son, Messiah, Yahushua HaMashiach, he created kinds. Everything is of a particular kind. And each thing is supposed to be with its own kind. Okay, There are vessels of honor and there are vessels of dishonor. Vessels of honor should not be in relationship with vessels of dishonor because one will defile the other in some way, shape, or form. And so the Most High is telling us in these verses that an ox and an ass and grape seeds mixed with seeds of other sorts and garments of linen and wool they're different kinds they don't mix they don't go together they're 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 cross purposed they're 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 cross purposes so you can't have them go in one direction how can two walk together except they be agreed and so in these verses of scripture you see these things not in agreement and so the Most High is calling us to agreement. He's calling us to unity. He's calling us to oneness. He's calling us to holiness and set apart living. He's calling us to put those fringes on our spiritual garments and indicate to the world and to ourselves, remind ourselves that we are called to set apart holy living, keeping Torah and showing forth his glory through ourselves to the world. So the question is, what kind are you? Are you the kind that inherits the kingdom and that inherits eternal life? Or are you the kind that the wrath of the Most High abides upon? Daily, we must ask ourselves, what kind am I? What kind am I being right now? You know, brothers and sisters, recently I did a video on judging in the narrow way. And we have been taught and told that we're not called to judge, but we are. There's a group of people in the earth who have been called to be the priests and the kings of the earth and are called to offer righteous judgment. And in order to offer righteous judgment, we have to first be in alignment, proper alignment with the Most High, with His commandments, with His statutes, and with His decrees and laws. And secondly, we must be in alignment within our own selves with regard to truth, with regard to righteousness, with regard to set-apartness. And in the process of having these things in alignment, we then are qualified for the Most High to speak His words through our mouths to offer righteous judgment in the earth. And when we do so, it will be from a place of integrity, a place of love, a place of compassion and mercy, and a place of truth. It may be strong truth, but it'll be truth. Okay? So we should constantly be looking at ourselves and the people in our lives and asking, what kind am I and what kind are they? We have to be able to differentiate the kinds so we know who to associate with and who to disassociate with. What kind are you? And at any given moment, are you being linen or are you being wool? Are you being cool toward the Most High or are you operating at a heated temperature where you're passionate and you're seeking after him with reckless abandon? What kind are you? What kind are the people in your lives? The people that you spend time with? What kind are they? Are they people who love the Most High? and who want to be a part of his kingdom, who want to obey his commandments? If they are, then they're going to help you to get to where you're going faster because they're going to be like iron sharpening iron. They're going to help you and you're going to help them. But those people in our lives who want nothing of the Most High, they want 
the things of the world or they want to remain in the religions of this world and they don't want to change or grow up into the most high they're not going to do you any good and you could try to do them good but oftentimes one ends up influencing the other and you could possibly potentially influence them in righteousness which is the goal but they could also influence you so the scripture teaches us that evil communications corrupt good manners meaning those who have evil intentions or wicked intentions oftentimes corrupt the ones who are on the right straight and narrow path so at any given time every day we must be constantly checking ourselves to see if we're in the faith and we must be evaluating the fruit of those who are around us to determine what kind they are so we'll know whether or not this is a good association for me or not a good association for me and that goes for friends it goes for business partners spouses your children's friends even to the degree of the television shows that you watch or the things that you engage in what kind is it is it the kind that is kingdom bound or that would be pleasing to the most high or is it the kind that is of this world right now we're in the time of great separation the most high is separating the wheat from the tares and the wicked from amongst the just and the wicked is to be bound up and to be burned which is indicative of judgment and the righteous are to be gathered into the kingdom and so this is an important time in our lives as Yasharal and of our history to really 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 hone in on those things that lead toward righteousness and righteous living and right living it's important that we really and seriously engage in the father's business the things that bring him pleasure the things that bring him delight the things that make him smile the things that make him look good in the world we know that our ancestors have not always done the things that have been pleasing in the most high sight and they were punished for it and we are in the process of finishing up the tail end of that punishment so we know what it's like to be displeasing to the father so may we make it our aim and our goal every day to be pleasing to the father to do the things that are pleasing in his sight and to make him happy with us to make him look good in the world so that when people see us they see abba they see abba yahua and they see our master yahusha and they see the good works that he's doing through us and they magnify and glorify our father and they come to us and they take hold of us the hem of our garments and they and they say i want to go with you because i see that yahua is with you teach me the ways of the kingdom teach me the besora teach me the ways of the most high more excellently that is the desire and that is the goal so may we forever 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 be those who are pleasing in the most high sight and may we daily check ourselves to see whether we're in the faith may we daily ask ourselves what kind am i and determine for the people who are in our lives what kind are they hallelujah hallelujah Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much for this new day that you've given us. A new day filled with hope and filled with possibility. A new day to put on our spiritual tassels and to indicate to the world not merely through physical uh, strings on the corners of our garments, but through the way we live and the way we interact with 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 our brethren and the way we treat one another and the way we treat those in the world. we can indicate to them that we're wearing our tassels we're wearing our zit seats our spiritual zit seats and we're showing them that we belong to you and that you are our father and that we are of a particular kind a holy kind a set apart kind a righteous kind a peculiar people a holy nation that we should show forth the praises of him who has called us out of darkness and into his marvelous light Thank you so much Father for this day. Thank you Father for for remembering us, for zakaring us, for coming after us in the midst of our captivity, in the midst of our sin and bringing salvation through your son. 
We thank you so much, Father, for your goodness to the children of men, to your children, your chosen, your Yasharal, your firstborn. Thank you so much, Father, for, for preferring us and making us your own, but not leaving those who are willing to obey you out in the cold. You have brought them in and grafted them into the into the vine so that they too might be a part of the nation of Yasharal, a part of the community and the congregation of the kingdom of heaven expanded onto the earth. I pray, Father, that you would offer us today your grace, your wisdom, your understanding, your discernment, your power. I pray, Father, that you would provide for our needs in, in, during this time. I pray, Father, that you will help us to, to keep us unspotted from the world as the world begins to celebrate their holidays. We have our own feast days that you have indicated to us that we are to keep. And we thank you for those. And we thank you, Father, that we can be in this world and be not of it that we can gather with our family and our friends and have times of fellowship and times of uh, joy, but not be caught up in the festivities of the time and of the season, of which there is much demonic activity surrounding the spirit of those things. Help us not to be involved in those things and to come out of it and be separate and to be of a different kind, to be in this world but not of it. I pray, Father, that you would protect us and keep us. And I pray, Father, that you would fight for us, fight our enemies, fight those who are trying to fight against us, Father. Fight them. And I call down the fires of heaven upon our enemies, Father, who are trying to destroy us just as you're trying to raise us up. I pray, Father, that you would bring your judgment. And in your judgment, have mercy. But I pray, Father, that you would bring your judgment. And I pray also, Father, that none of us would be caught in the crosshairs of your judgment because we, through disobedience, have failed to come out of Babylon. Because those who are in Babylon will be judged with Babylon, no matter if you're Hebrew or Gentile. So it's time we must come out of Babylon. First in our heart, and secondly in our actions. So Father, help us. Give us the grace and the strength and the faith to do the things that are pleasing in your sight and to do the things that you've called us to. We thank you, Father. I thank you that we can come to you and we can ask for help in time of need. Bless us during this time. Help to keep us unspotted from the world. Help us to not be lonely for or desirous of the things that we used to involve ourselves in in times past when we didn't know any better. Call us out of idolatry, Father. Call us out of being a part of this world and set us apart for your service, for your purpose. Make us holy and without blame before you, spotless sons of the Most High Yah, in the midst of a wicked and perverse generation. Help us to shine like the sun. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy and your compassion. Heavenly Father, I give you honor and praise and glory this day. And I pray, Father, that one day, soon, we would hear the trumpet. We would hear the trumpet's call. And we would see the chariots come and gather your elect from the four winds. We give you all the honor and all the glory and all the praise in advance, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you. In Yahushua's name we pray, amen and amen and amen. And I also feel led, Father, to offer up a special prayer to those, Father, who may be sad or lonely or depressed during this time. Father, the joy of you who is our strength. Be our joy. Be our strength. Be our encouragement. Be our comfort. Provide for physical and financial needs, Father. Provide. Provide, Father. I thank you, Father, for all that you do for us. In Yahushua's name. Amen. And amen and amen. Well, brothers and sisters, thank you once again for joining me on the channel back here at Trumpet's Call and our morning prayer. I just thank you for clicking the button. I thank you for your faithfully watching. If you feel led to, I pray that you would share the video or subscribe or even comment if that's something that you feel inclined to do. But either way, I'm glad that you're here and I pray that you have a blessed day. And I pray that the peace of the Most High be yours today and every day. 
I pray that he would make his face to shine upon you and grant you peace. In Yahushua's name I pray. Amen. Shalom.